Welcome to Cast and Crank Podcast. Today we have Nick Smith, the informative fisherman. Um, great podcast. Yeah, he, he he opens up. It's pretty cool. We we do a lot of uh, talking about social media and stuff, and he opens up a, a lot. I think, uh, but it was a good podcast, and uh, I got some good ones coming up. Sly Guy Lures is going to be next week. The YouTube version of this will be up later on because I have to edit all the video and I haven't had time. And uh, that's about it. Hope everyone's staying safe. Uh, everyone's trying to social distance fishing, I guess. And uh, hope to hear from you guys next. Okay, I'm not going to hear from fucking any of you guys. <laughs> I don't know why the fuck I'm saying that. Um, listen to our sponsor. Uh, this is their last week. Oh, Luke, I thank you again for uh, sponsoring the podcast for the time you did. So now uh, we're going from there. I don't know what we're doing. So we'll see. And uh, give us five stars. If you could do that, go on iTunes. Give us five stars. Subscribe to us on YouTube, on the YouTube channel, Cast and Crank Podcast. Uh, I try to put up some other stuff too, some fishing content of uh, either uh, me looking like a fucking idiot or uh, the other good guys that are really good. Like I think Seth has some footage we're going to put together. And uh, Joe, uh, Cody, Smith, uh, Code Green. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But thanks again for listening, guys. And uh, I guess you'll hear my stupid ass next week. Aloha was born in Hawaii, but the Aloha spirit holds no geographic boundaries. With Aloha as our foundation, Olukai takes a different approach to footwear. Olukai crafts only the highest quality shoes and sandals with premium materials and artistic story detail with a style, durability, and versatility for today's watermen and waterwomen who lead an active ocean-bound lifestyle. In fact, Olukai's water-friendly, I'm going to try this, Nohia Maku, Slip-on shoe and ulele sandal are actually made to get wet. Instead of me talking, I'm going to uh, insert Benny. Benny Florentino is a guest of the podcast, and he has way more experience with this than I do. So I'd rather have you guys hear the truth than me try to give you something fake. Listen. You know, I've been fortunate enough to be an, uh, an ambassador for Olukai for the past five years. And, you know, they just came out with ulele. Uh, it's all-day comfort footbeds. And the non-marking outer sole, so for those of you who have really expensive boats, they're not going to mark the sole up. And it's non-skid. That wet grip rubber outsole for great traction on wet surfaces is phenomenal. And they look good and comfortable. Whether you're loading up the boat with supplies at the dock, shoreline fishing from the rocks, or scoping out the best place to cast from the beach, Nohia Maku and Uleli is destined to keep you sure-footed with comfortable island style through every step of the journey. Shop or find your local retail at olukai.com. To support the podcast, go to www.olukai.com forward slash cast and crank. Please, guys, go. If you're going to buy a pair of sandals, just go out there and uh, get online and go to that link. It's going to help us a lot. Check it in the bio of the podcast. Thanks again for listening, guys. Today, I have the informative fisherman. Pretty stoked. Hello. <laughs> um <laughs> So uh, we've gone back and forth uh, a couple times about having you on, and, and I do want to get up there and do an in-person, but right now with this COVID thing, I'm kind of doing the whole uh, phone thing, you know, for now. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a plan, man. I'm sure you've been doing the same thing. I seen, I, I watched your bed fishing one, you know, and that was really cool. Been playing it safe, you know? It's, yeah. uh, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, definitely. And uh, so you... The interesting thing about you is I I started fishing about 10 years ago. And uh that's when I would Google stuff and your state your your YouTube channel would come up often, you know? Because oh, yeah. I mean, it, so when did you start the Informative Fisherman YouTube channel? Oof, man, that's um well, I went full time in fully licensed, let me let me clarify, fully licensed in 2010. Um, but I was doing it years before then. Um, I actually started the first fishing YouTube channel. Well, second to a guy called Roger, the bass guide that I'm not sure you guys have probably never heard of Roger. Roger is a, he's a little person and Roger was an awesome dude. Like and a, like I used a dwarf to watch, or a, what's that? He's like a dwarf. Like, oh uh, yeah, he's a little person. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so I was watching a couple that Roger did and I'm like, Oh man, it'd be nice if somebody else did this. Well, I was on fishing forums 
And back in the day, this is just, this is before all your popular social media stuff, guys. And we actually went to a website. <laughs> we would physically type in the website yeah. and go there and people would ask fishing questions. Other people can answer, you know, from their own experiences of what have you. And, um, I was talking to a guy on there that I went back and forth with on a fishing thread before on one of these bulletin boards or whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and, uh, he was on the island of Sri Lanka and they just got low profile bait casting reels. And I think this is maybe 13, 14 years ago now. Yeah. And uh, he was asking to use a, how to use a centrifugal braking system on an old school Corrado E. And so I went to fill out this long reply and I am not a writer. I will tell you that right now. <laughs> Horrible writer, <laughs> this guy. Yeah. And so I went to read what I had wrote out to this guy and I'm just like, Oh man, there's no way he's going to know what this is doing. So I asked my dad, I said, Hey man, let me use that little digital video camera. Uh, remember the, remember the little digital cameras, they take pictures, but then they would take like 20 second videos. Yeah. This is old school guys. I'm, I'm old here. You're talking to a gray one. <laughs> and so I go out into his garage and I, and I shoot this little video of how to use this thing. It was some janky footage, man, really bad. Um, but the information was there. And so the guy was like, Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Well, about three months goes by and he sends me an email says, Hey, have you seen how many views uh, that video has? And I go, no. So of course I forgot my YouTube password like everybody else. Uh, so I figured out, I go back in there and it's like just over 60,000 views wow. in three months. And I was like, Whoa. And uh, this was before the informative fisherman channel. It was under my personal name, you know, for, family stuff or just wanting to watch videos. You used to have to make an account, mm -hmm. not like nowadays. And so, uh, I was going through the comments and, uh, guys like, ah, oh, super informative video. The video quality sucks. And another guy like <laughs> next comment down goes, yeah, he should call himself informative fisherman and do better videos more often. And I said, thank you. <laughs> and then, uh, then I went and started the informative fisherman channel and just, you know, from time to time I would just, post up a video, whatever I was doing. I've always been into this, you know, ever since yeah. I was little. And uh, one thing led to another, man. It was crazy. Yeah, that's that's pretty wild. And you have, so your you have like a pretty high videos, like the the uh, the views on the videos are a lot. Like I, I was just looking the other night and the not, I think it was a not tying one. It was oh, like almost like 2 million views. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. Yeah, that was, uh, you know what's funny? It's, uh, I'll tell you guys right now. It, this was a, right time, right place deal. Um, a lot of people ask me right now, Hey, I'm, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. What should I do? And I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm one of the originators. You're talking to the wrong guy. I don't know how to do it nowadays. I'll tell you that because YouTube is not my bread and butter anymore. I've become a spokesperson for lots of uh, international brands and there's much better people at YouTube than me nowadays. If you look, I am not up with the YouTube lingo, uh, following the YouTube algorithms that they want. So, you know, my Facebook and other social media, TikTok, Instagram, um, all that stuff comes second to my actual job as being a spokesperson for these other brands. So you you don't see nearly the amount of content on my YouTube channel as some of the other popular YouTubers yeah. um, out there. And people ask me all the time, like, dude, how come you don't post more content? And I said, well, go follow this guy, these guys, this company, and then you will see what I'm actually working on. And, and I'll tell you why I went down that path. And this is fascinating because um, not to toot my own horn, but I was the first full-time fishing YouTuber. Okay. A lot of people aren't aware of that. By six years, ironically, and this is because, um, do you know, you know who, the ad, do you know who was at after you who kind of followed um, suit? Pretty sure it was fluke master or Lake Fort guy, uh, okay. Justin Lake Fort guy. Uh, good dudes. Both are good dudes. Yeah. Um, well, YouTube ads wasn't a thing to where basically you had to be affiliated with companies, um, or endorsing their brand. And uh, luckily, my father was really good at videography. So I asked him, hey, let's try to turn this into a full-time thing because I got reached out to from different companies that wanted to advertise on the videos. And I'm just like, oh, you know, whatever. I threw a number out there just like anybody would. And they, of course, lowballed me. And I'm like, yeah, why not, man? Money's money. And I'm doing it anyways. Yeah. So. That's yeah. a... And I'm sorry, go ahead. 
Yeah, so uh, one thing led to another. My father filmed. Um, we started making actual commercial breaks to put in. And, uh, you know, it that all took off. And then years later, YouTube ads came out to where you can get ad money. But the problem is what I was doing was in violation of how they want to advertise. So it kind of, it kind of strayed past for me uh, because I was an originator and I figured out how to make my own revenue. That's why I varied from that line of people that you would call YouTubers versus brand ambassadors like myself. Yeah. And at this time when you were kind of doing, do you have a big tournament background? Do you have a big, are you just kind of a, a enjoy fishing? You know, what's funny. Um, I did do the tournament thing uh, for a while there and I did pretty good, but not major level tournaments, just local club level, um, you know, Delta bass tournaments, just things down those lines. And I enjoyed that. But for me, it's much more of a, I like breaking down the science and the research. I was a huge uh, Doug Hanna fan. Um, all the researchers back in the day, all the old school stuff, uh, Rick Clunz, one of my favorite anglers of all time, because Rick put out a lot of literature mm -hmm. and I liked the scientific aspect of it a lot more than the competitive aspect. And all of my best fishing buddies were all avid tournament guys. So I had respect for both worlds. So for me, it was always about doing the best you can out there not necessarily about going out and having a beer and hoping something bites my, my Senko, you know, yeah. I, I like to improve every time and then challenge myself and not necessarily a tournament format, but I love both. So I actually stepped away from tournament fishing uh, because I brought on a lot of tournament buddies and I didn't want a conflict of interest because my living became making videos not necessarily surviving off a uh, supplemental income via tournament money like them. So ethical conflict at that point. So that's why I've merged away from that. What year did you kind of stop the tournament thing and, and, and focus on the 2010, 2010. So when the channel started picking up, you kind of went, uh, I'm fucking just going full on YouTube. <laughs> I cuss a lot. I, I said, I, this is how the podcast is real raw. So I mean, yeah, right. You're just like, uh, the tournament thing's great, but YouTube seems to be like the, the thing you want to do. You like making media. So that's kind of how you pursued that. Yeah, it was a, it was a right time, right place, right skill set ability. Like I had no intention of ever doing this full time. I'll tell you that, that right now, Nick, it's like everyone in my family, when I originally told them, Hey, I think I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to go for it full time. They're like, you're out of your freaking mind, dude. It's the internet. Yeah, Met my wife on the internet started a career on the internet. Ah, uh, dude, yeah, it's crazy. Uh, all great timing. So it's crazy when you look back at this, and I'm like, how could this ever have gone full time? For me, I grew up um, obsessed with fishing, all fishing, uh, bass fishing primarily because there's more literature there than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, but I love all fishing. If it's swimming, I want to catch it. I can go out. You and I, bro, I could run down to SoCal, wherever you're at. We can go whack bluegills and I'll be having a good old time, but I'll be trying to perfect our technique out there the whole time. Yes. Uh, then we can run over, grab a case of beers and go throw <laughs> for some catfish or something. And I'll be down to do that too. And a lot of guys try to knock, you know, dudes for what they're into. And I'm just like, what for? I used to do trout tournaments all the time. I love it all. You know, and that's, just, that's another question I have for you that I, I, I feel like you're kind of like me somewhat where you're kind of like you're, you're yourself, you're a goofy dude. I feel like you're fun. You want to have fun. You know, like I watch your videos, you fuck around. Like it's, you're having a fun time. Um, dude, do you feel I like I, it's tough for me to take life <laughs> dude, and, I, and I'm the same way. So it's like, I don't, I really talk about, you know, myself i like to know about the person and the whole the whole purpose of my show is to interview you maybe not just fishing but to know more about you do you feel like because you don't take it so seriously maybe some anglers don't take you as seriously that are you know professional or what it might be you know like any kind of flag every there's always going to be a fucking hater somewhere and i'm saying sure. you probably get the same shit are do people oh, yeah. maybe not take you as seriously because 
you know, you fuck around. You you uh you don't really like take it seriously when you're doing it. Uh yeah yeah I get it. Um I think when you put yourself in front of a camera and you put yourself out there, um no matter how good of a person you are, how nice of a person you are, there's always going to be people who come after you. And dude, I was born with a central tremor, so my handshakes and my and my eyes twitch. I'm not sure if you noticed that, but mm-hmm. probably it's pretty obvious. I notice when I watch the videos. <laughs> Um, and dudes all, they, right when I first started this, they're like, Oh, is that dude on crack and shit like that? And I'm just like, you know, at first I'm like, no, dude, I felt like I needed to explain myself all the time on there. And then I'm just, you know, one day I'm just like, fuck it. Who cares? Yeah. And then I just went on from that point. And I used to like, I used to be super critical. Like if I stuttered or made up a word in the middle of my video, I used to go back and be like, Oh, I got to fix that. And then I, you look back at my old stuff, it comes across like almost robotic. Like I was so critical on getting the right information across that like everything was to the T. Nowadays, I'm like, whatever, dude. If I, <laughs> if I happen to make some shit up, some word out of thin air, it's like, God, ah, dude, who cares? You know, this is it's a normal conversation between yeah. a couple of buddies. What changed that? Like, you know, I mean, I think when everyone starts something, you're critical of yourself. You're critical of what you say. Um, what changed that? What was the time that you were like, I can't stop. I can't, I got to stop thinking about this shit. I got to just move forward. It is what it is. What really made you go, I'm, I'm done with that. Fuck it. Uh, you know, um, I would say it, it was a combination of a few things. It was seeing it on a regular basis, um, to where, you know, you become accustomed to something. It's like the first time, you know, in high school when you got to go up and you got to read a book or something in front of class or elementary school or whenever it is, and, and you get nervous. You're like, oh, man, I don't want to do this. I don't want to make the speech in front of the class. Well, you know, third, fourth, fifth time doing it, you become accustomed to it. Oh. You know, you become, whoop, there you I lost you there for a second. <laughs> you become accustomed to it, and then it's not so bad. And I think that comes across with anything. If even if people scrutinize you or make fun of you enough, you take it to heart at some point, but at some point you start turning that corner, you know? And if you got other positive people in your life, I could see how people, if they don't have positive role models in their life, the support of a wife, girlfriend, parents, you know, other friends, then yeah, you can, you could take that to a dark place. Um, But if you have those positive figures around you, I think, and you just keep moving forward, you, you will take it to that spot. And this is funny. It's a, I was listening, I forgot who the motivational speaker was. He was an Asian guy and it was, I think he was from Korea. Mm -hmm. And I was watching this on a Ted talk a long time ago. And he said, the first step to achieving greatness is taking a step. And I had to let that resonate with me for a minute and think, you know what? There's these times where you just don't feel like you want to move forward or people are tearing you down and you know what you have to do in life. And we picture this as a big task. And the reality is all you have to do is start. And once you start or you take that small step or you say, you know, I'm going to try it, even though you may not be familiar with what that task is, it creates motivation to where just take that one step. And, and that's the reality. You know, there was times where I felt like, oh man, this is getting to me. Do I want to still do this? And, you know, it came down to taking that one step. I wish I would have heard that speech you know, long ago and just move forward. No, it's just great. this forward. is a great uh, piece for me to think because I've been at that point a couple of times that people listen to this. I'm ready to go. This is fucking stupid. I'm not doing this fucking podcast anymore. You know, I'm done with it, you know, or something like that. Or I talked to my friend uh, Woody. He's a diver down here and we talk. And, and I, I'm from a class where it's like, if you're going to say something to someone, say it to their fucking face. You know, yeah, and, absolutely. And, and I would never air something on a podcast or anything like that or, or and, and your media on someone else. But uh, I think that's a great thing just to to take a step forward and just kind of keep pushing your media. Um, were you married when you started this channel? Like when you, when you started monetizing, how about that? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got married in 2007. Uh, I've been with my wife, Pam, for a long time now. Uh, let me not screw this up. Uh-oh. Going on 
13 years. Wow. <laughs> so if she watches this or hears me, I might be in trouble. I think I got that right. Uh, we got, we got three kids, man. It's, uh, so the combination of things I was telling you. And that's kind of the question I was getting at is when you made the jump to go, I got a full-time job. You probably had a good job. Your wife's happy. She's doing her thing. And you're going, Hey, guess what I'm going to do? I want to quit my fucking job. I'm going to do this full time. And you're going, huh? You know, like, that's kind of what I want to know is how did that go? Yeah. So he, this is actually a pretty wild story. So I was, uh, Growing up, I was an always an outdoorsy person. My best friend, Nick Merritt, he's super tech savvy. He even hacked, when we were in elementary school, he hacked into our school's um, grading system. <laughs> Believe it or not, this is not made up. Like, he is good. He's like Ferris Bueller, huh? Yeah, it was just like <laughs> Ferris Bueller, dude, exactly. <laughs> and Nick was always super technically savvy. You know, Nick and Nick, and, hey, and you're a great, Nick, too. That's great, kind of solid, ironic. strong name, strong name. It is a solid <laughs> name. Name your guys, uh, name your kids Nick, guys. It, it should work out just fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nick, Nick, Bobic. They're, they're going to get it, guys. Um, so, anyhow, Nick always kept me involved in technical stuff, and I used to try to drag him outdoors. Never worked out. But him dragging me to the technical stuff worked out. So I ended up becoming uh, kind of like a, an IT person in a sense uh, for a company that Elon Musk started uh, with his cousins called Everdream, uh, which was purchased by Dell. They built custom computer systems for people. And my job kind of became explaining technical stuff to people that were not technical. So breaking down technical stuff kind of became my skill set because I was comfortable talking in front of crowds of people. So it kind of, it kind of carried over, uh, for what I did. Well, I was working for that company called Everdream mm -hmm. and in the process of Dell buying them, Dell bottom, I still work there and the YouTube channel started to take over and I'm like, you know what? I can do this. Um, I just got to merge out of here. Maybe I'm going to do one part time and one or the other. And I told my wife, like I was living in the San Francisco Bay area. I lived in Fremont union city border right there by the Dumbarton bridge. And I'm like, I think I can do this full time if we move to the Central Valley and we can cut our costs. I can be closer to the Delta, be closer to the lakes. Let's do it. Right. So for my resignation, I wrote a letter, a roast letter. Believe it or not, I probably still got this email. My buddy Nick can find it. If not, I'll post it. I'll give you the letter. That'd be great. I'll put it in the video. I went. <laughs> And I roasted every single person I worked for oh, that said I'm out. It didn't show up the next day. Oh, wow. What movie is that? There's a movie like that. He goes, fuck there you. There was, Office yeah. Office Space I, or something like that. Yeah, um, I was inspired by one of those old school, <laughs> early 90s, 80s yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's I, so, I did so you, that. Did you feel like you did that to make sure, like, I'm doing this? I didn't this. go back. You can't go yes. back. There's no way. This is it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh. You know, I cut the lifeline. You know, I said, okay, there's no way I can go back to this now. Yeah. I'm out. Wow. And the funny part is all the managers actually enjoyed it. <laughs> and I still talk to them to this day, which is funny because I don't think they've ever gotten ripped like that. Yeah. And a lot of them watch the videos and they don't even fish and they message me from time to time. So it's really entertaining. But yeah, so no, we, uh, we moved out to Stockton and, uh, um, dude, I was struggling. I was struggling. I'll tell you this right now. This is what a lot of people don't know. They think it just happened and came easy. Uh, I was struggling bad to where I had to take a part-time IT job where I would drive into people's houses and re repair their viruses and stuff for a company called Nerds on Call, bro. Like, I'm confident, <laughs> dude. I wore a shirt that said Nerds on Call. I had to comb my hair, no hat. <laughs> And I would go in and fix their computers and like dudes had porn all over the right. computer. Like, every one of them. <laughs> no, serious. Like this is like every other day I had to go and like clear all the porn off guys' computers because the pop-ups and they were scared their wives were going to catch them. No joke. No joke. <laughs> Listen to this crazy ass story, bro. Listen to this crazy ass story. This is a hundred percent real. Okay. I got two crazy stories. I even had to quit that job because it got unreal. <laughs> I went into this dude's house and he goes, my wife's going to be home. By three and it was like 45 minutes or something like that and he goes you need to get this off or else he gave me the or else and i'm like 
or else what, man? I, I don't know if I can get this off there by then. Just get it done. Just get it done. And I go, bro, like here, let me just take the computer to the shop. And that way I guarantee you I can get it done. No, you can't take this computer out of there. And I go, well, then I can't help you, man. I can't work with like an ultimatum. And dude raised up on me and he's like, what the fuck's your problem? Come oh. into my house and gonna and gonna roll on me like that, right? And he was some thug. <laughs> We're talking stocking here, okay? There's some bad parts, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And he, he goes, I ain't even playing no more. And he starts digging through his drawers. I ain't playing, looking at me yelling. Oof. This fool, I don't know if he had a gun or a knife or what. I just looked and he was coming at me. And I'm a big ass dude. And I did MMA for 12 years, but he had that crazy shit. Like the homeless dude that's trying to bite you. Like, <laughs> I don't care how badass you are. You, you run, you yeah, run from tweakers, yeah. bro. I don't care who you are. You know, you be Chuck Norris. You're running from a tweaker, right? Like, <laughs> even though you got that classic roundhouse in your pocket and you're ready to use it. So I jump out. I eat shit over the top of this dude's fence. Cause then I'm, I'm out of shape at this point. I've been fishing, like fishing half the time doing nerd shit the rest of the time like i was done training because i met my wife and i gave up the whole mma thing yeah. i wasn't that good anyways i got my ass beat twice i won 12 fights but i got stuck oh, that's by wrestlers. Good. did you yeah. did you uh did you fight uh was it amateur uh in, in some gyms some open mat nights that we did some stuff but no i never got paid really uh, not not at that level back back in the day dude mma like you you weren't getting paid for it what year was this i'm a big i'm a big mma fan too so I, I was wondering. So I, so I eat shit over this dude's fence. I jump in my car, like my face is scratched up, my elbows scratched up, and I call the cops. Right, cops roll out to this dude's house, and I'm like, oh my god, dude! I had to do a report, like dude was trying to attack me. It was all kind of a blur, but um, the next day, the dude calls the company I work for and says, "Can you send a technician out?" I'm having these pop-ups on my computer I can't get rid of. Like, no joke, right? I don't even realize it's the same address till I'm following the navigation. Oh, shit. And I go rolling up onto that block. I called my office. I said, this is the same dude I called the cops <laughs> on yesterday. So I just rolled up out of there, right? Yeah. So I'm like, I told my wife about this. She's like, oh, my God, that's crazy, babe. Well, yeah, so another time... <laughs> I go to this old lady's house. I fix her computer. She was cool. And a sweet old lady, right? Well, she was browsing the wrong stuff or something. And she got some pop-up in like the next day. So I'm like, hey, no problem. I'll come over there and fix it. I can't get to your house till like 4 o'clock. She comes walking up in the shop, holding her computer, crying that you got to fix it. You charge me money. And I'm like, oh, ma'am, I was going to fix it, right? Yeah. So believe it or not, this lady's probably in her late 70s, early 80s. I take the computer, go to turn around, and she throws a windmill haymaker and hits me in the top of the head like no joke. I'm glad I didn't wow. get rocked. It would have been the most embarrassing day of my life. <laughs> my coworker starts dying laughing. There was only two of us in this office. Yeah. He's like, oh, oh my god! And I'm like, ma'am, calm down. And she's like, she's like going for a tackle on me, bro. Like she's going, for, she's just gonna try to take me down. So I'm like, ma'am, calm down. You need to, you need to head home. I'll take care of your computer. Otherwise I'm going to have to call the police. Cause like, dude, like literally I got the apology letter still, bro. This is a hundred percent real. My <laughs> wife loves this story. hundred percent real. I got an apology from like a late 70, early 80 year old woman. She's probably a hundred now. Yeah. Or maybe past. I don't know. Apology letter says, I'm sorry for punching you in the head. <laughs> <laughs> what a great no joke. <laughs> no joke. So anyhow, that lit the fire. I bet. I bet, man. You need to start reaching out to companies. And, dude, back in the day when, like, you talked about talking to companies and you're like, hey, um, I do YouTube videos. They're like, yeah, so does my grandkid. Yeah. And it was hard, dude. It was like pulling teeth. So what a lot of these young people don't know, a lot of these young YouTubers is that, dude, I used to fight tooth and nail. I had to scratch my way up to explain to them the power of social media, all these different advertisers to where – it, it wasn't the way it was. I was one of the originators like fighting for all of these social media people to get somewhere to where when you talk about pros disliking social media people, yes. it's very real. It is very real. Um, I'll tell you right now, this is why I felt the need to bring different pros on my show and share that spotlight with them because 
believe it or not, uh, YouTube has taken a lot of sponsorship money away from guys who are avid tournament anglers. Um, is it wrong? No, it's not wrong. It was destined to happen either way. Uh, but is it the right thing to do for social media guys to support the tournament industry and to support those anglers that paved the way that we learn from? Absolutely. Um, is there enough people doing it? No, there is not. Um, this is a lot of pat yourself on the back for the social media stuff. A lot of these guys are doing it by themselves. Um, they just want the attention. I'm over that. I think maybe a long time ago, I liked, you know, the views. I like the, Hey man, that's cool. You know, I, I was, I was getting off on that. You know, anybody who says, Hey, it's cool to meet you and ask you for your autograph. Yeah. It releases endorphins in your body. It feels good. It's, it's exhilarating, but it's not about that for me. I think for a little while it was, I'll be a hundred percent honest yeah. with you. Uh, it, it's a great feeling uh, to be recognized. It's great. It, it feels good. Everybody wants some sort of limelight. And I'll tell you what, man, um, limelight, I don't care who you are. Um, I'm a, I'm a Z list celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> if um, you're Z, I, happen, right. <laughs> I happen to know some A-listers, which is kind of cool. And if it happens yeah, to this, yeah. um, <laughs> But I'll tell you what, um, for all the attention, there's a lot of very negative attention like you asked, Nick. There is. Yeah. There's people who will threaten you. That'll threaten your family. Um, there was a misunderstanding. I had some dude threatening to shoot my dad. He's like the nicest guy ever. Um, I moved because of this. Um, there's a lot of stress. Was this um, because of a, a lake or a YouTube creation? A YouTube like, creation, blowing uh, up a lake, or... I could see blowing up dolphins. lakes. Yeah, people getting mad about the lake. It happens down here. It happens everywhere. But, I mean... Well, there's some crazy people, dude. <laughs> crazy. Like, they're not sane. They're crazy yeah. about it. Yeah. And, like, that's all they have. That's all they have. So, I make it a point not to show exactly where I'm at. If you happen to recognize the spot, you recognize the spot, Sure. Uh, but I'm not going to show you an aerial view with a GPS location. You know, I'm not going to intentionally blow someone's spot up. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, some guys do yeah. on YouTube. And you know what? It is public water and they're within the rights, but it's good to have some sort of principle about what you show. Um, yeah, you shouldn't try to destroy people's stuff. But yeah, man, I've had crazies coming after me. I might have dude say they were going to, they said they were going to whoop my ass at the International Sportsman's Expo. And I said, hey, first shot's free. Just let me know if it's coming. <laughs> and, like, I'm okay. Have you had anyone actually confront you? Uh, yeah, I had a dude. Uh, he wanted to throw hands on me. And so I took off my jacket and everything. And I said, let's go. And then he just kept talking shit and puffing his chest. Kept oh, talking shit and puffing man. his chest. I'm not going to say names. No, you don't you have guys to say probably know who he is. Um and this was at the Sacramento Sportsman Show. Wow. And so I said, go ahead. I put my hands down. I said, go ahead. And uh, needless to say, it didn't happen. Um, he was a popular bait maker. And needless to say, he's not anymore. Uh, wow. Because he the true colors shine through. Yeah. But, um, you know, that, that happens. And I feel sorry for a lot of people. You know, I'm a confident dude. I have no problem getting in fights. I fought for years. But a lot of people do not want that in their life. Um, and I'll, I'll bring up a scenario. The you got you probably heard of the Guggen Squad guys, right? Yeah, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I'll tell you right now, if you're a Guggen Squad fan listening to this, what they are doing, getting a lot of young people into fishing, is absolutely fantastic for the sport. I don't do it the way they do it. That's fine. Everybody has their own avenue. Mm -hmm. um, positive fishing is positive fishing. But they used to have uh, the involvement with uh, Fluke Master Gene Jensen. And Gene went his separate ways and somehow it offended uh, the Lunkers TV guy. And he turned his fans on Fluke Master. Well, Gene's a dad. He's got young boys and kids at home and a wife. And he started getting all sorts of threats, you know, and an empty threat. You don't know who it's coming from. So it put all sorts of stress on this dude, you yeah. know, and he's a non-confrontational guy. He's not a fighter. Um, I felt horrible for that dude during that time. And, and I got a little pissed off at the Guggen squad guys. I didn't make it public that I was pissed off at those guys, um, that they needed to retract 
whatever whatever was said. I don't even know exactly what was said, mm -hmm. but dude, it carries over. And I think what we all miss out on is that getting more people into fishing and just bringing fishing to a bigger platform only helps us all. You know, uh, when guys, you guys, some guys listen to this, probably watch my videos and probably like, Oh, I hate Nick. That's cool. I'm, I'm cool with it. You could totally hate me, but what you should know is that your local, uh, tackle shops, I'm supporting them guys. Um, uh, if I go to a lake and fish, that local tackle shop where you like it, that one custom bait maker that you know that lives down the street from you and they carry his stuff, chances are they may buy more of his stuff for you to get. Mm. Um, those people that work those snack bars at those lakes, they need people coming there. You may have a secret thing dialed in, um, but if you don't share the wealth with others, you're not supporting the industry that you love. If you catch one or two fish next time or less than the next time you go out, get better. Um, we need to share this industry. We need to talk at least tag a lake. When you go catch fish at a lake, say, Hey, this lake was great. A uh, lake's popping. I, I caught some good fish there today. You don't have to say exactly how you caught them, but share the wealth, you know, you the blurring that, of backgrounds. You still get shit though. I mean, for tagging a lake, I mean, down in Southern California, uh, I see people do it and you see some people go, thanks, fucking asshole, or, you know, whatever it might be just for tagging a lake. You know, that's the hard part is I agree. I'd love to put up pictures like of everything that I can because a lot of mine's salt water and I don't put yeah. up anything anyway because I don't give a fuck. I don't, you know. Right. But when you do, it's it's kind of hard to tag the lake and not get shit from people like, like we talked about, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll tell you one thing right now. Uh, California is really bad at this. We are, we're probably the worst at hating on one another. You go to Alabama, you go to Missouri, you go anywhere in the Midwest, it's commonplace. Um, they're busy. Yeah, lakes are busy. But look at the anglers out of there. My buddy Mark Daniels um, was a Northern California guy out of, uh, you know, used to fish the Delta with all the time. Mark mm -hmm. moved to Alabama so he can fish the tour and make it easier. And, you know, we have these talks. I meet these guys over there that have no problem say in the lake you know they raise their skill set i think honestly you need to ask yourself if you bash people who tag a lake the only thing you should be concerned of is boat traffic because anybody who's going to rush there because they're not skilled enough to catch them at their home water are probably amateurs may not be at your level anyways so why not encourage those people be like hey there's a lot of you know two and three pounders biting a senko up this creek arm why don't you help them out yeah. You know, why don't you help them out? Chances are they're not at your level. They're probably not targeting the same fish you are. They probably don't have the same skill set. They're there supporting that lake, keeping it open for all of us, keeping the fish stocking, keeping the trout stocking, the trout plants, you know, paying these marinas to keep it clean, keep the bathrooms clean for you. Yeah. You know, this is, this is something we have to do, man. And a lot of the rest of the country is so different than California guys. It really is. I know probably the majority of your listeners are, you know, in Southern California. Yeah, I, I, and I, I am I, meaning to make my way. I'm going to go catch some spotted bay bass. <laughs> how it goes with you, bro? <laughs> yeah, come down. You're always invited, dude. We're that's a, what I do a lot do of. Yeah, it's fun. It's a little. I get. It's cool because I'm getting listeners from you know back east. I had a guy message me. By no means am I like a a spotted bay bass guy or anything like that. But that's what I do, and uh, I get people going. Hey. uh, we're going to do my bachelor party. We're coming to California. We're going to go and, you know, uh, catch calicos. Where do we go? And I'm like, oh, try this guy, this guy. You know, there's so many good guides down here. And, uh, you know, it's really cool. Or I had a, do you know uh, Fish on Guide Services up that way, Sean Anderson? Uh, the name sounds familiar. He's a G-Rat to bait guy. He fishes G-Rat. Um, he was oh. on the podcast, and he's like, I love Oh, this Sean, thing. Sean, yeah. Um, he's in Sacramento, uh, River, I think. Yeah, he does the, yes, I do know him. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Garrett's buddy. Yes, yes. yes Garrett from G-Rat's buddy, Sean, yes. who guides the rivers with the big uh, sneaky peats and stuff. Yes. yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry, Sean, bro. That's <laughs> all. That's my bad. <laughs> My bad, John. He's a guy I, I talked to from up there. He's a really great guy. And uh, we talk about Calico. He didn't come down this year, but last year I hung out at the booth with him. He's a he's a guy I, I first phone interview like about a year and a half ago. But he, we talk about Calico too. I mean, and you the cool thing is, is you do all species too. You're Absolutely. not just, yeah. Yeah. That's the cool thing. 
because most of these I'll, guys I'll are. Love it, yeah. And you try to do you do a lot of traveling then too at the same time? Or you um, try to I was. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and then the virus showed up. So I've been chilling now. Yeah. Do you, uh, uh do your dad, uh, works with you then? He does. Yeah. He travels cool, with me. Man. He's the videographer for the show. I edit and do everything else, but he, he loves to film. My dad loves to hang out. He's super cool. My dad's been like my best friend since I've been a little kid. He, we, he would make bombs. We would blow shit up together. <laughs> He'd teach me how to make booby traps. Like I had 21 broken bones. He had 19 growing up. I've had seven sets of stitches. I've been lit on fire. <laughs> Like my dad and I are like super accident prone, yeah, crazy. Like, here's the thing: if I wouldn't jump out of like an 80 foot tree into a lake, my dad would be the first one to call me a pussy. And I uh, <laughs> and I thank my dad for raising me that way because now when I look at other people or other dudes that won't like are like Ugh, touching a fish, I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> no, I think I'm the same way. With I have a 15, a nine, and a two year old boy, so. Me and my 15 are like, if you ever watch my Instagram, I'll be driving him to school and he'll be looking at his phone. I just slap it out of his hand, you know, <laughs> just to be, he'll get mad at me. I'm like, hey, I'm just playing with you, you know, but he'll get me like, he almost pinned me the other day and I'm a short stocky guy. He's taller, you know, and we start wrestling. I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You know, I mean, there's little fun stuff like that. But so at least the cool thing is your dad does get to travel with you. Has he been like super supportive of you, this Always, whole thing? Dude. Yeah. Always. My number one supporter. Uh, oh, man, I was a screw up through school. I'll tell you this right now. I used to get caught cutting to take my square bill down to the local pond. I get caught in the middle of the day. I get in trouble, get suspended. My dad always had my back. My dad made consequences clear, man. We had a we had a paddle on a wall hanging up in the kitchen with drilled holes through it. So that sucker would sting more. My dad awesome with his hands he's very crafty dude <laughs> uh, me not at all man like i would be like the worst dude in home ec. i am i could change my oil but like that's that's the next level stuff for me you know <laughs> <laughs> and uh i i'm a good outside the box thinker i'm creative but not working with my hands so my dad like he made it real clear if i cross the line I just had to accept the consequence. He wasn't going to be all pissed off at it, at it, but Hey, you do the crime, you do the time. And as his time was instantaneous with that paddle or a belt. And yeah, I had to, I had to take a, a whooping a few times, but he made it very clear. You know, I'm all for spank nation. Me too. Uh, I'll, I'm all for it. You got to spank your kids, man. This time out nonsense kids flex. Um, <laughs> dude, I've had, I've had teenagers flex on me like trying to act tough. And I'm like, the hell's wrong with you? You never had your ass whooped kid? Like, like I had a little hundred pounders come up to me. I'm giant, dude. I'm, I'm 242 pounds right now. I'm six, six. And I'll have like little tiny hundred pounders soaking wet teenagers. When I, I, you know, there's some rough neighborhoods around here. Yeah. Try to flex on me. And I'm like, wh where's the pecking order nowadays? You I know? feel like that's, and, that's here too. I had a kid do that in front of my house and I'm like, I'll go get my son and he'll fucking beat your ass in my head. You know, like I know my son could fight and beat you up, you know, like, but I feel like that even is nowadays, like people, you hear them talk on whatever they might be on. They talk like they never got hit in the face. Right. Yeah. Even on YouTube videos on Instagram, it's like, man, you must've never been hit in the face. Cause you don't talk like that. You know, like, you, mm -hmm. know? you know, you ever heard the term, everybody thinks they're tough until they get punched in the face. Yep. And this is a reality check. I think getting punched in the face does you a favor. Yeah. Uh, learning your pecking order in life is, does you a favor. If you had brothers, I never had a brother. Luckily I had some rough friends and a good dad. Um, but I see this, you know, little boys who grew up and, and never had a rough time or their parents stopped a confrontation too soon. You have this false sense of reality. And, and this carries over to, um, I'm not bashing anyone politically right here, but, people you call a libtard okay that like oh everything's peaches and cream hunky dory give everybody everything everything works out great no you have to work for what you achieve if you don't work for what you achieve i don't respect you if you were born rich and you didn't decide to push the envelope to create something on your own you do not you have not earned my respect yeah you earn someone's respect when you earn your keep i'm absolutely not for that i, I love the way this country's built you know and 
granted, it's okay that you think that way. And I think it's great that everyone has a difference in opinions. I don't want to live in a communist society. I'll tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. But to earn my respect, you have to earn your keep. Yeah. And, and that's just how it needs to be and learning your pecking order in life. And this is how this relates back to what we were just talking about. It's good to get your ass kicked once because it, uh, it, it's like taking that first step that we talked about earlier. You, you kind of realize like, you know what? Uh, maybe I shouldn't have crossed that line. Right. It, right. And that's good to have in the back. Of your head. Yep. I agree a hundred percent, man. Um, so when you know, it's, uh, scary yeah nowadays <laughs> it is um mm -hmm. so back to fishing when was the the who's the big sponsor that kind of helped push you forward do you have someone that you've been with for a long time that you're like wow this kind of is your your dude you you stick with the company you stick with so here's the thing that's kind of crazy about this so originally I got reached out to from a couple of smaller companies i won't even say the names and they say hey can we stick a picture or, or a website in front of your video I said, sure. And they go, how much? I go, a uh, hundred bucks. And they go, how about a hundred for two? Oh, oh, sure. Perfect. So I get a call one day after I've done three or four of those. And it's the owner of P-Line. Oh, wow. uh, one of the owners, not John. John's the original owner from Italy. Okay. John is the father of Stefano and Angelo Pucci, which own Pucci and P-Line. Mm -hmm. So Stefano calls me and Stefano is a hard businessman. And I'll do my impression of Stefano in case he's watching this. <laughs> hey, uh, is this Nick? <laughs> yeah, what's up, Stefano? Um, I didn't know who he was. Um, I uh, own and operate P-Line out of Burlingame. Uh, we like what you've been doing with your YouTube videos. And I'm like, whoa, okay, here's a cool call. My problem is, this is what he tells me. <laughs> my problem is, that's you, Stefano. It's 100% you, bro. <laughs> um, that you don't do your ads in the middle. It's in the beginning. And I don't like them in the beginning. So what we would want, and he's just telling me how this is going to go for them. And I love Stefano. I've been with him to this day. Even though I'm busting your balls, bro, uh, still love you to this day. I think you're very entertaining. He's not into fishing at all, but you're very entertaining. And I love your personality. Yeah. Uh, our problem is we want like a 20 or 30 second video in the middle of your videos. Why don't you just make a commercial break? If you could do that, um, then let's talk. So I'm like, okay. So he sets up a meeting. So I go, I make him a sample of what I could do with his line. I happen to use P line, which is cool. And I think he noticed. Uh, that's why I got the phone call. I'm trying to think who even gave him my freaking phone number. Come to think of it. I don't know how the <laughs> hell he got my phone number. One of my buddies must've knew the guy. Um, so I make him this sample video and it's a, it's a P line video with my, uh, with all the sample footage that I had of catching. And I showed the labels of his boxes and everything. And he's like, I love it. And uh, so he negotiates a price with me. And needless to say, that price has hardly changed over the years. And it's because they are originating advertiser with me. And uh, he's like, okay, I like it. Let's do a one-year contract. And I'm like, boom, oh, light bulb. Right. Contract. Commercial break. Huh. Wow. So everything followed suit. Uh, the price grew a little bit um, because I needed to pay bills. And PG&E doesn't take fishing numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they did, dude. I would be so well off. I'd be a wealthy, wealthy man. <laughs> and hey, look behind me, dude. This is yeah, I'm this looking at right this is not even a tenth of my collection. <laughs> look, dude, it's just oh damn, it's, it's endless in, in the boxes, and I got another garage full. It's my boats. It's ridiculous. Yeah, uh, I've been doing this for so long, <laughs> but um, you know, different companies followed suit and. I uh, got a couple offers to be a spokesperson for a few different brands. And then I kind of just started merging away. The other social media platforms came out and I started doing a uh, specialized content for them, for their own platforms, for magazines, for different TV shows and, and everything down those lines. And that's kind of where I went from being a YouTuber um, for a certain amount of years. I think I was a YouTuber for, for half of my career. Uh, then I became a spokesperson for this later half. So yeah, which so is you great. Don't see a lot of YouTube video guys. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you also have your own event up that way, correct? I have a, uh, I have two. Okay. Um, that we do. Um, this last winter I didn't do it. Um, we call it if miss informative fisherman's Christmas, um, to where I do a big free event for the fans. We go to a lake. Um, uh, we do a big giant dinner. 
Um, I do after party in the cabin. We do a huge raffle, giveaways, seminars, hang out, and we do a fishing free fishing derby the first half of the day. And then the second half of the day is that where everybody camps and hangs out. It's the funnest thing, dude. I got I got Nerf machine guns, bro. <laughs> like, man, check this out. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna like this. Damn, bro. you're no joke right there, like, dude. <laughs> I got I got thirteen nerf rival things man like we drink we have fun we're not out of control yeah not me not me at least <laughs> maybe everybody else but dude it's fun okay so then we do that usually every fall um and then in the spring at modesto toyota uh it's the biggest uh toyota dealership in california um we take the whole parking lot and do vendors booth it's called the if expo and we have bass pro shops brings a swimming pool out full of fish for the kids to catch we offer we give free tacos cool. to everybody that shows up. Uh, we got uh, cat countries there playing music. We got games, tons of giveaways, and all the booths are free um, if I invite you. If I think you're a cool company, you got cool people working for you, I invite you for free. Come hang out. I don't care if you advertise with me or not. That's I cool, want to get man. back to this industry. That's cool. It's how we all need to be, man. And people hate me. Because I love giving back to this industry. So kiss my ass. <laughs> I like it. I back it. I back it 100%, dude. Um, that's really cool. I thought about putting in something like that on down here. Same thing. I wouldn't have charged the vendors. It's like, why? Just for fun and maybe do a raffle and who knows. Yeah. But I think that's really cool that I have the same outlook as you. Is I'll put you on if I like you. Why not? You know, or I'll I'll invite you if I like you free, man. I don't give a shit. You know, like if I like you, cool. You know, that's it. You know, but I, I back that a hundred percent, dude. You tell me when, man. I'll, I'll help you out any way I can. Let you know. I cannot believe this thing is still charged. I just seen the light come on this gun. <laughs> I haven't. I didn't even do the event this fall, and it's still charged. I got to go light up my wife and kids in a minute. Uh oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I really appreciate it. Like I said, my podcast is a little different. It's more of a story about the fisherman. More than it is about fishing. I just like meeting the dude and maybe knowing the backstory. So that's yeah, kind of like a good what time, we man. Did. It's yeah. really cool getting to know you too, Nick. Yeah. I didn't um, get a lot from you. Maybe I'll switch this interview. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm I'm an idiot, so <laughs> um let's uh, plug uh, all your sponsors. <laughs> let's plug all your sponsors. Um man, I uh I got a variety of them. Um so Savage Gear uh, took over the spokesperson gig for Savage Gear a little over a year ago for, for the United States. Savage Gear, what you used to know about Savage Gear, they're a whole different version now. Savage Gear Americas is for the United States on this completely different brand. So a lot of the Savage Gear stuff you're used to seeing was for the world. Uh, now we're making it like uh, the new DC Frog. Yes. Check this out, bro. Like, um, I helped develop this with the product developer, uh, Jose Chavez. That's the new DC Frog. We got real. It's a really sick design. How is we this did it. We the same? It. Uh, is you know Rich Baldonado? Uh, don't doesn't. Ring I think a bell. he paints all the Savage Gear stuff. Oh, awesome! I yeah, think yeah. He's. I'm trying to get him on, but I've seen pictures of him in there. I know he used to paint swim baits like ten years ago. He's really Dude, our, our fin our finishes on everything yeah. are freaking amazing. Yeah, I've seen the the new stuff, and I'm like, wow, yeah. 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 So, you know, I took over the spokesperson gig for them. Um, the spokesperson for headbanger lures, um, they just released the new rocker heads, a new custom swing head jig that vibrates. It's like a weighted chatter bait. That's super weedless, uh, okay. which is really, really cool for like yo-yoing through heavy weeds and off of rocky bottoms. It's really unique. It's like yo-yoing a lipless crankbait, mm -hmm. but with a swing head jig, um, which allows you to get in a way heavier cover structure. Um, then I've been with P-Line for years. Uh, Mustad, I've been with them for years. I love working for Mustad. They have crazy cool hook selection. Boat Country is the dealership out here in Northern California. And I run a Crestliner. People ask me why I run a Crestliner. Uh, because the Crestliner people are cool. And they reached out to your boy <laughs> and said, Nick, if we give you this much, will you run this aluminum boat? And I'm like, wait, I can still haul butt. I only spend like 30 bucks a day in fuel and I can run all over the place. Yeah. I'm a fisherman. I, I fish for a living, dude. I can't afford no $500 in gas. Like some of my boys are using. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. So Crestliner and boat country, uh, work together to take care of me for that. Um, you know, those, those are some of my primaries right there. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, 
Monster Bass right here. So if you guys haven't heard of Monster Bass, you should definitely check them out. So you guys have seen the box companies a whole ton, right? Yeah. You've seen it forever. Uh, my buddy Rick Patry um, used to own and run Lucky Tackle Box. Um, he decided to go away from it because a lot of the different investors had different visions for the box company and wanted to start using some off-brand baits. Rick goes, I'm going to start another box company. And I'm only using high-end brands. The margins are going to be super small, but I think it would be cool to give everybody like premium baits. So now I get to decide a lot of the cool baits that are going in the Monster Bass box. So like, I guarantee you're going to see these new <laughs> frogs. The rocker head was just in yeah. there from Headbanger. Like tons of cool stuff. Yeah. Um, go, going into this. So uh, Bill Lewis Outdoors, Rattle Trap. You guys heard of Rattle Trap, right? Yep. Um, I've been with Bill Lewis for a couple of years now. Me and Mark Daniels, Brian Latimer, we're all Bill Lewis guys. Um, Bobby Bear used to live out here on the California Delta. We've all been with him for a long time. Mark's new square bills are sick. The uh, SB57, mm -hmm. a really cool honeycomb square bill. There's a lot of cool stuff, guys. And I'll tell you one thing about my advertisers right now. I wouldn't work with them if they weren't cool. And I can tell you basically everybody who's in charge their names and I've made it so far in this industry that I don't need to support dickheads. <laughs> and I, this is cool because this, uh, this podcast is real. Next podcast is real right here. So I'll keep it real with you guys. Thank you. Um, Wes Higgins, owner of Bill Lewis outdoors, super cool down to earth guy calls me every other week to talk about pan fishing with his kids. Like that's who I want to support. The guys from Sweden, from Headbanger, at first, I'm like, I didn't know if I wanted to get involved. They flew out here to California, spent time. They taught me how to say all the bad words in their language. Um, I referred to them all with dirty gestures in their own language. And I still do. And they're cool as hell. So I'm like, these are my dudes. Yeah. Savage Gear. Check this out, bro. Magnus Gunnarsson, he's the president of Savage Gear Americas. He used to be the president of Mustad. Okay, so cool, right? Now, the Mustad guys, I joined up with them. I was in South Carolina at a Bassmaster Classic. We went to this pizza place, all right? And they said, Nick, we're interested in working with you. And the president of the company, we were next to this shooting basketball thing. And I said, if you beat me in this game, you name your price. I beat you. I name my price. And he thought it was hilarious, right? He ended up kicking my ass. I don't even know how it happened. <laughs> I'm like, you got to be kidding me, right? And so I started working for them. All cool dudes. Uh, so Magnus, from he went to run Savage Gear Americas, and he actually started Savage Gear way back in the day and then went to Mustad, came back. Yeah. So my buddy, who was the old marketing manager for Mustad, um, incredible videographer, one of the best in the whole fishing industry, Sam Root. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you guys need to look up Sam Root on Instagram. Sam has insane footage of tarpon on swim baits. Uh, Sam put me on my first tarpon on a swim bait. Wow. I've only caught tarpon on eight inch plus swim baits, guys. I've never used artificial. So I, my tarpon game is so backwards from everybody <laughs> else's. I use all lures, yeah. all Savage Gear lures. Yeah. Uh, then I got to meet one of my best friends I can consider nowadays. Jose Chavez is the U.S. product developer for Savage Gear. Super cool dude. I go to Florida with them um, each year now. And we have a ton of fun, man. These are cool freaking dudes. Like, I'm not going to support a company that has their head up their ass. Yeah. I'll tell you that Yeah, right now. And if at any point, if you stop seeing me work with that company, think about that. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a great, great uh, outlook you have. And I mean, uh, have some kind of integrity, right? You have to. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Not many people have it nowadays. You I can know. tell you have it, Nick. This is the first time we've talked over video. <laughs> this is really cool. I can tell you have integrity. Guys, listen into this right now. If you're one of my viewers and I share this with you, uh, definitely follow this podcast. I just got into the whole iTunes actually following podcast because I listen <laughs> to Joe yeah. all the time. I need to get Joe's ass out fishing, though. I think he's a fishing hater. <laughs> <laughs> right. so. Yeah, I got to get some of my UFC buddies to call him on it because I know that Joe know, Joe knows all of them real well. My yeah. buddy Clay, uh, he's cool with Joe, and uh, Clay Clay and I talk fishing all the freaking time. There you go, dude. Yeah. Clay is a great guy. I followed from a UFC. Like I've I've watched Pride 
dream all the everything yeah from a long damn time. you're an originator dude so yeah. yes i watched i used to watch all the pancreas all mm-hmm. the pride fc all the original stuff like i've been i've seen every single ufc since one and in that order i didn't watch them later in life that's what got me into it uh, i know we were already trying to wrap this podcast no, but no but... check this out <laughs> so i of course watched uh hoist gracie and stuff submit a couple guys and i'm like wow this is crazy right so of course, you watch it on TV. You could do it, right? We all do the Steven Seagal moves. We just watched it a couple times. Now we know him. So anyhow, there was this wrestler of Alameda School District, because I grew up in the Bay Area, uh, Jimmy. And some dude said, hey, Nick, we're going to give you 100 bucks and Jimmy 100 bucks, and you guys go fight in his backyard, right? Because this is when UFC first came out. So everybody wanted to fight. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. So we go out in this dude's backyard. He is not a good striker, and I, I used to grow up fascinated with boxing. I had some people teach me how to box and stuff. I start teeing off on his ass, so I get cocky and stand close to him. This dude's an amazing wrestler. This guy scoops me, and granted, in ninth grade, I was 6'6". Six, six, okay, I got this tall fast, so I was one scrawny twerp. This dude scoops me up over his shoulder and dumps me on my tailbone. Oof. knocks all the wind, shoulder drops right in my diaphragm. Ooh, you know that, I can't breathe. And he starts beating the ever-loving shit out of me. Well, someone's parents showed up, and they're like, dude, stop the fight, stop the fight, right? And so we're like, we're talking, me and, and like they pulled me and Jimmy to the side, and he goes, oh my God, dude, I thought you were going to kill me. I'm like, bro, I thought I was dead right there at the end. He goes, oh, I didn't even know you were hurt. I'm like, dude, I was ready to give up. I thought someone was going to stop it already. <laughs> and so I'm like, damn, I got to learn jujitsu, man. So I, you know, I started learning jujitsu with some friends and started training with a fight team, no gi jujitsu. I'm like, I loved MMA, dude. Look how jacked my nose is. Like, I shattered my nose three times. You had to fight heavy. You had gotta, to fight heavyweight then, right? Uh, light heavy. I was two hundred five. Who did you fight? Who's your most the most notable fighter you fought? Uh, nobody. No one. No. Uh, Bobby Salworth used to talk all sorts of shit from American and Kickboxing Academy because I dated his ex girlfriend. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry, AKA, Bobby. Dude, dude, fuck. The past. <laughs> uh, Bobby used to fight the UFC. Yeah. <laughs> he'd, he'd probably stop me, dude. Like <laughs> UFC level and other organizations, guys are so far apart. Right. Yeah. From one another. Like, dude, yeah, you make it to that pinnacle. It's like being in the NBA versus playing like, yeah, you know, well, I'm not even going to compare it to the G League. I'll, I'll compare it to like, <laughs> to like basic collegiate programs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't stand much of a chance. <laughs> well, hey. I'm glad that never, uh, never <laughs> went down. Thanks for all the good stories, man, and opening up a little. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you can come down here and do some Calico and we can meet up and do an uh, in-studio one once all this COVID stuff clears up, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me to do this, Nick. Yeah, Thanks for, for sure. everybody tuning in. Uh, hopefully you guys are all staying safe, man, and enjoying enjoying life. Don't 